Welcome to my weekly market roundup, 8th March 2020. I am Saganandi. I used to work in IT, mostly based in Singapore. I retired several years ago and now I am living in Thailand, swing trading stocks. I use the Q trading systems and techniques. You may watch this and other videos on my YouTube channel trading profitably and contact me using the email id tradingprofitably at gmail.com I regularly share stock and market analysis on my traders forum sagarnandi.com and also on my twitter page twitter.com slash sagarnandi All these resources are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them. Before I begin, let me go through the disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on the trading systems and techniques I use. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. As usual, in today's topics, I will look at oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. Then I will demonstrate the use of 360 degrees analysis that is a technique where you can align the forces from the market level, sector industry level, fundamental level as well as technical level with your trades thereby giving you truly high probability low risk trades. That was the last slide of my presentation. I will now continue with the live system. Let me point to some of the resources. This is my traders forum sagarnandi.com. It has topics under various categories. From the learning center, you may learn how to use the unambiguous techniques to enter and manage trades. The member area is for Q systems users to download the latest version, etc. and contact is there with my contact detail. There is one more category. To view that category, you need to log in. If you don't have an account, you may create an account using your email ID. A validation email will be sent to your email ID. Once you validate your email ID, you will be able to log in. Let me log in. Once I log in, I see this additional category Q360 degree stock analysis. This is where I share live stock analysis using the 360 degrees technique. I always attach the real time snapshots of the stock technical, fundamental, as well as industry analysis. I think you will find them quite useful if you are swing trading stocks in the USA market. The next resource page is my Twitter page twitter.com sagarnandi This is the last tweet that I shared doubling a trading account in two months and one week a real money trading account this year I had the idea of starting with a relatively small 30k account and see how long it takes to double it. As of last Friday, I could double it. I will come back to this later in today's webinar. 
then here is my YouTube channel trading profitably here you may watch the previous market roundup videos as well as other useful videos what did I mention in my last market roundup I titled it that massive sell-off and substantial profit can come together this was the title of my previous market roundup on 1st March that indeed came true because I could double the account that I started 1st January another thing to note that in the previous market roundup I shared my market outlook as bullish not bearish why did I do that if you watched my previous market roundup you know why I mentioned that that was because multiple market ETFs were at a support level how did the market work out this week I will go through that using live charts shortly this is the trading account that I use TestyWorks to carry out the exercise from the beginning of this year I started the year with about 30,000 US dollar my aim was to double it and as of this Friday I have achieved that because the net liquidity is now more than 60,000 US dollar PNL year to date is about 32,000 this does not include the commissions and fees if you deduct that the profit will be about 30,000 which is doubling my initial capital of 30,000 USD why did I use TestyWorks? Because TestyWorks doesn't have a simulation account. What you see is the real money account. TestyWorks is in fact not the best trading platform. It has certain advantages. However, it is not the best trading platform. In terms of placing orders, it doesn't have all the facilities that are available in other trading platforms for example TradeStation my main trading account is in TradeStation though for the exercise I used a separate account that was useful because I didn't want to mix up my usual trading account with the exercise account the exercise was how long does it take to double a small size account TradeStation has many advantages for me I can run the scans to look for trades using the queue systems on TradeStation. I could use the radar, I call queue sonar using TradeStation radar to identify trading opportunities in real time and then have a look at them using the queue at a glance template. If I find a trading opportunity, I can then switch to the registration matrix this ladder with the bid and the ask columns I could use the matrix to immediately place the order all of this I can do together on a single platform that's why I prefer to use trade station for my actual trading not testy works only for the exercise I decided to use testy works so that I don't mix them up I achieved this doubling of account in two months one week how many trades did I take I took more than 75 trades about 75 trades were using options and futures and there were several stock trades as well 
were all the trades profitable? Certainly not. If you look at the year to date result, several stocks are in red and several are in green. This may not be of a single trade, it is the summary of the different instruments on UNG net I had a loss on Tesla I had a net profit so on and so forth I calculated about 65 to 70 percent trades were profitable maybe not 70 more like 65 percent trades were profitable if you can achieve anywhere above 60 percent profitability with swing trading and you can achieve 1 is to 1 reward risk ratio that is enough to achieve high annual percentage profit on your total capital I did position sizing I started with a small percentage of my initial total capital and as I accumulated profit I increased my position size that also accelerated the PNL in the beginning to adhere to the position sizing I use stocks later on I could use options options have fixed lot size 100 that's why it's not always easy to position size using options in the beginning for a small account size therefore in the beginning I started with stock trading when I add some profit then I could trade both stocks and options I continue trading stocks also because some of the stocks that I wanted to trade didn't have liquid options the bid ask spreads were not narrow enough so I continue to trade stocks and I could trade options and later on when I increased my profit further I could take some futures trades also I used micro e-mini in the beginning and later on I traded e-mini futures as well the futures were mostly intraday trading I didn't hold them overnight this exercise is now over during this period what happened with the market let's look at the market chart SPY I started the exercise in January that is here in the beginning price went up then it dropped sharply tried to recover somewhat then dropped again therefore my exercise period starting from the beginning of the year was not smooth sailing for the market initially it went up then sharply fell tried to recover and fell down again in spite of this apparent randomness in spite of this huge volatility I could achieve significant high percentage profit within a short period of time two months one week I could double the account what was the secret one secret was that I was flexible I didn't have any preconceived notion of what the market was going to do I have very clearly defined trade setups when the setups appeared I took the trade and the setups were all 360 degrees trades that is trades where the market level sector industry fundamental and technical level forces were all aligned I think that helped me achieve this high percentage profit in spite of the market volatility in fact in this period all the long trades I took I think barring one none of them got stopped out majority of them in fact hit the profit target during this period for long trades I think one might have stopped out 
no other long trade stopped up. And the short trades that I took in this period, all of them gave me large percentage profit. Why the longs didn't do poorly in spite of this huge drop? Because when the market was at the top, I was not buying overvalued stocks. I was buying only undervalued stocks and in industries that were showing some signs of strength. That's why I think the trades worked out pretty well. What resources did I use for the trading? In terms of hardware, I am using not a super power desktop, but a reasonably well powered desktop. I have fiber connection for internet. Not the highest speed fiber connection, but fiber connection nonetheless. Initially, I was using two monitors, but during this exercise, I used a single monitor. I didn't use four or six or eight monitors, only one. In terms of trading software, I use Q Global on Metastock. I used it for charting and also for scanning using the Explorer Q Sonar scans. Metastock has certain advantage in terms of finding stocks using the Q Sonars. That's why I use them. I also use Trade Station. Trade Station sonar or radar is extremely useful in finding trades in real time. Therefore, I use Trade Station as well. In terms of sector industry rotation analysis, I use Q Edge. Here I can see the sector rotation and industry rotation happening in real time. The zero day column shows the data in real time. That was extremely useful in identifying trading opportunities, probably well ahead of others. For peer and fundamental analysis, I used Q Vital. That is also useful because sometimes I may start with a particular stock in mind, but maybe end up buying another stock if I see that the later stock's fundamentals are better and technically also if the later stock gives me a trade setup. And I used Q Finder in conjunction with Q Global on Metastock. As I explained in previous market roundups, sometimes by looking at the summary data and looking at the overall market, you may have an idea in mind and then drill down into either the long opportunities or short opportunities, as the case may be, and look for those setups that you have made in your mind, the scenarios that you have in your mind. I'll try to apply the same technique into this session also. These were all the resources I used. Only Q systems. I used Q Global on Metastock as well as Q Elite on Trade Station. And then I used Q Edge, Q Vital and Q Trade Finder. All of them are 100% real-time systems. I never store any data on my computer. Everything is in real-time. Those were the resources that I used to achieve 100% profit on my total account size in two months and one week. Let me now begin with the regular market roundup topics. I am starting with the two commodities analysis, oil and gold, starting with US oil, the oil ETF. And I am looking at it using the weekly backdrop chart template and daily hop on chart template. 
usually I use QGlobal on Metastock to let me use QElite on TradeStation. You may use either of them to analyze the commodities as well as markets and stocks. In the previous market roundup, when price was at this level in the daily chart, I mentioned that because price has already dropped significantly, I was not going to look for a shorting opportunity. I was going to look for a long opportunity. Price tried to bounce up a little bit, but then dropped again. There was a bullish headwind on this day. However, there was no bullish headwind trade setup because the weekly did not meet the checklist requirements. At minimum, looking at the daily bullish headwind, you would protect profit in any existing short position that you might have. What now? Now price has dropped significantly again and I can see there is a watermark support level that is coming from far, far away. They tend to provide robust support. If price bounces up from here, then you may look for a bounce long trade set. Let me also have a look at the oil futures. The symbol is CL. As you can see, when price came here, I was looking for a long opportunity because USO had a watermark pivot and the future at CL. CL is the symbol, interest station. It uses the prefix at for futures. CL was near a memory that is automatically drawn smart trend line support. That is why I was looking to have a buy setup. That didn't materialize. Now price has dropped. Let me switch to the monthly chart. You can see the previous low was here, February 2000. 16. Price is almost at that level now. On Friday, price dropped by 4.33. It is very close to the previous low of 2016. How much close? Much less than the drop of Friday. It is very likely that the 2016 low will be breached and then if price reverses, you may look for a bounce setup. Gold ETF GLD using the weekly daily at a glance template. In the previous market roundup when price was at this point, I suggested looking for a buying opportunity. That was very helpful because after that price rose sharply. If you had taken a long trade based on my previous market roundup analysis, you reaped significant profit in this week. Now price is above the upper boundary level. It is overbought in the daily chart and also overbought in the weekly chart. That is extended for me and I am not going to look for a buy setup in GLD right now. If I wanted, I had already taken a long trade at this point. I am not going to take a buy at a higher price. I prefer to buy at a lower price. Now. GLD is bullish, however, there is no long setup for me right now. After 
commodities analysis i continue with the market level analysis this is the highest level of the 360 degrees analysis that i carry out the aim is to find out if the market is bullish or bearish if bullish i'm going to look for primarily long trades using stocks and if bearish then i'm going to look for primarily short trades using stocks starting with the s p 500 etf spy in the previous market roundup price was at this point close to the memory support line that's why i changed my outlook from bearish one week ago at that time to bullish what happened this week price tried to go up and then drop However, it closed above the same memory trend line support. You can see that in the weekly also, the memory trend line support held. If you look at the weekly activity or volume bar, that is in green color, showing that this week price in fact closed higher from the week ago. Therefore, the view that I had the bullish view on the market came true and the long trades that I suggested in the traders forum based on real-time stock analysis as I mentioned barring one none of them stopped out instead several of them hit my profit target now on Friday price bounced up from the memory support again. If I am going to look for a trade now, I am going to look for a bounce kind of long trade in SPY. I am not going to look for a short trade. Let me also look at the ES, that is the S&P 500 futures. Here also the weekly memory trend line support held nicely the daily memory trend line support also held nicely for the week price in fact close higher again i am going to look for a possible bounce long here i am not going to look for a short trend because the memory trend line supports are holding well and they tend to work very well these bounce trades give attractive low risk buying opportunities and you might have already found that out from the ideas that I share in this market roundup videos and also from the ideas I share on my traders forum and Twitter page. NASDAQ ETF QQQ In the previous market roundup I mentioned that it was near the watermark pivot support level. That's why I was bullish on QQQ also. This week, though the weekly backdrop color is remaining bearish magenta, it in fact closed higher than the previous week. You can see that from the green activity bar in the weekly chart. And price closed well above the daily watermark pivot support that was my basis of changing the outlook from earlier bearish view to bullish view and I am going to continue with my bullish view on QQQ what about the future symbol NQ here there was support from the weekly memory also and there was support from daily memory as well again that was another reason why I changed my outlook one week ago to bullish and I am continuing with the bullish view especially if this daily memory resistance is broken I am going to look for a buying opportunity in NQ or QQQ Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF Dia 
it was near this weekly pivot support level one week ago this week price in fact close higher I am continuing with the view that it's more likely to go up now than down what about the future symbol YM here also the weekly pivot support is holding watermark pivot and in daily price created a false downside breakout on Friday we have a mixed shape candle solid body that is bearish but long lower tail that is bullish if price goes up from here I may look for a buying opportunity IWM Russell 2000 ETF this was near the weekly pivot support here price is closing at the same support level both in the weekly as well as daily in the daily you can see price tried to go down on Friday but recovered probably closing just below the watermark support if next week it goes up it will create a false downside breakout it's already down a lot I'm not going to look for a short trade if anything I'm going to look for a bounce long in IWM and what about its future symbol RTY very similar picture there is a watermark pivot support price close probably slightly below that you can see the weekly price close slightly lower than previous week however it is already oversold I am not going to look for a short opportunity now I am going to look for a buying opportunity if price goes up Russell 2000 is not the strongest of these four market ETFs or futures it is the weakest so if I am going to look for a long opportunity I am going to look for it not in RTY or IWM but in one of the other market ETFs or futures or even better instead of buying the ETFs or futures I may look into the constituent stocks or liquid stocks in general and find stocks that are going up with the market that are fundamentally strong and that are in industries that are relatively strong that tend to give higher probability trades than trading the ETFs or the market futures time to make a call on the market outlook one week ago I had the market outlook as bullish and this week I am continuing with the bullish outlook why because the supports that were the basis of my bullish outlook one week ago they all held probably for Russell 2000 it didn't hold but for the other market ETFs futures they held pretty well for the week price actually went up for S&P 500 Nasdaq 100 and Dow Jones industrial I am going to continue with the bullish outlook and look for stocks that may give me buying opportunities after the market level analysis I continue with the sector level analysis here I am looking at the 11 sectors across three review periods this week's performance previous week's performance and two weeks before that together they give about one month of sector performance one week ago all the sectors were down this week relatively it performed better four sectors went up and seven sectors went down overall it is still bearish because more sectors went down than went up but it is a significant improvement from one week ago which sectors went up these are the ones for which the red bar is to the right of the zero line 
they are utilities, consumer staples, real estate, and healthcare went up by a very small percentage. They are all in defensive areas. That is not very bullish, isn't it? This is the view of the weak as a whole. Using the real-time sector industry rotation analysis on Friday, you could see some interesting changes happening in real time. Let's switch to the Q edge and find them out. This is Q edge. I'm looking at the sector tab. Here using scorecard and heat map instantly I can see sector rotations happening in real time. Cyan represents strength, magenta represents weakness. If you look at the 5 day period, the weekly period, you can see the strongest sectors are utilities, consumer staples, real estate, healthcare. What we already saw from the graph. What if I look at Friday's data, short by Friday's performance, then the strongest ones are utilities, consumer staples, communication services. They are still in defensive areas. There is no difference between what we saw from the one week scores and one day scores, Friday scores. However, sector level is quite broad. To see the changes happening in real time, we better look at the industry level. And let's look at the industries now. If I short by zero day period, there are some defensive industries coming to the top like drug retail, broadcasting, etc. However, there are some interesting ones coming to the top as well. Airlines, laser facilities, hotel and resort rates. This is what I found interesting. Because of the novel coronavirus, aren't they supposed to do poorly? They indeed were weak earlier. However, now on Friday, they seem to improve. I could highlight multiple industries, these three interesting industries and drill down into the underlying stocks. When I did that, it also showed me the industry changes, percentage changes happening on Friday. And you can see airlines, hotel and resort rates and laser facilities. They in fact went up on Friday. In spite of all these scare that is going on about the novel coronavirus. These industries were better earlier, but on Friday they in fact went up. There may be attractive buying opportunities here. If you see the market is bouncing from the support levels that I showed, the watermark pivots and the memory trend line supports, then you may find some very attractive low risk buying opportunities. How could you trade them? If it is extreme bounds, you may trade them using stocks, of course, or you could use short put verticals. And if you are able to manage the risk, you could also use short put, naked put. Of course, that has very high risk, so you may assess that relative to your risk tolerance to find out whether that is the right instrument for you. If you are not ready to use naked short put, you can always take short put vertical. Those work very well, extremely well in a bounce setup scenario. You may look at the individual stocks 
and then see if there is a bicep instead of trying to find trades from here which is one technique that I use let me go back to the trade finder going to the summary on the long side there are total 213 symbols and short side 868 I ran it on a list of stocks that are very liquid the list has about 2000 plus stocks out of them majority gave a bearish signal on Friday 213 gave bullish signals and in terms of that total number of signals across all these stocks there were 1500 plus bearish signals and about 300 bullish signals it was still overall bearish you know from the previous market roundups that I sometimes look for anomalies and what anomaly did I see overall it was bearish however I saw more bounce happened on the long side more headwind also happened on the long side more box and more reversal happened on the long side same is true for the touch all of these columns touching a memory support bouncing from a memory support headwind possible reversal signal box again a reversal setup from pivot level and the reversal candle all these point to possible buying opportunities at the very bottom and that is matching with the market level analysis that it seems to hold support and it may go up from here that is also matching with the sector level analysis that though it is remaining bearish it improved from one week ago and it is coinciding with the few industries that I found they were supposed to be very bearish but they were not they in fact went up on Friday now I can look for long opportunities that are of bounce nature and look for buy setups there the two stocks that went up most with a bounce setup possible bounce setup are PENN and SPH let's look at these two stocks I'm going to use Q Elite on Trade Station P E N N. In the daily, it precisely hit the memory trend line support and bounced up from there. In Q Technique, there is a bounce trade setup that is the set up for exhausting market conditions this stock is fitting that criteria bound setup requires checking the stock only on the daily time frame it seems to give a bound setup as of Friday PENN -E you may also look at its fundamentals and industry strength that will complete the 360 degrees analysis I tend to not take a trade based on only technicals technically it is giving a proper setup but I will not buy unless I see fundamentally it has some strength either in terms of valuation or in terms of earnings growth and also industry has strength either in terms of relative performance relative to other industries or at least starting to show acceleration you can find those out from Q Vital for fundamental analysis and Q Edge for industry rotation analysis. The other stock that I saw from Trade Finder was SBH. Let me also plot that on Q Elite SBH. What do we have here? We have price hitting the weekly memory trend line support after a sharp drop and trying to recover from there 
and in daily also price having a sharp drop stopping right at the memory trend line support coming from far away and stabilizing there in fact it also displayed a headwind possible reversal signal on friday if you apply the checklist conditions for the daily chart as well as the weekly chart you will see this in fact has a headwind reversal trade setup on friday and it is also giving characteristics of the bounce setup because it hit the memory support both in daily and weekly and stopped there in addition it is also displaying bullish pressure and bullish pressure u-turn i will be pretty happy to take a long position in this stock and if I do that, my entry price will be at the close of Friday with stop just below recent low. And I'll try to book initial profit, at least partial profit, either at the yellow direction line or at the top of this level, which are at about the same price level. Or once the risk distance is covered more like somewhere here or maybe even lower i think this is going to give me a low risk high probability trend why don't i look up its fundamentals let's go to q vital i'm going to enter the root stock sbh everything is happening in real time it is connecting with definitive zenith stock zenith and getting some basic data about the stock collecting its peer stocks and more detail about the peer stocks so updating the vital statistics and what do i see it has excellent valuation robust earnings quality short squeeze potential Though the last quarterly earnings growth is negative, last yearly earnings growth is positive. At least in terms of valuation, it is looking strong. Therefore, I am happy to take a long trade in these stocks. Fundamentally, it is strong. Technically, it is strong as well. You may check the industry strip. Why don't we do that now? I can travel to the industry rotation analysis tool by clicking this cog icon industry icon specialty stores industry it is slightly improving it is not one of the best performing industries now the zero day or the five day performance is not in cyan color however it is improving over a period of time and the base columns also showing some acceleration not the best performing or best accelerating industry but it is improving looking at this 360 degrees analysis fundamentally undervalued stock giving a very nice headwind and bounce long trade setup and the fact that market may be bouncing next week I think SPH may give a low risk buying opportunity. Part of QH is the inside tab. And if you are watching my market roundups, you know that me and other Q traders regularly look for buy setups from here or short setups. One of my favorite categories is to look for undervalued stocks and you can see here casinos and gaming and hotel and resort rates we have two stocks from there one is PENN we already saw its charts that looked interesting and also XHR aren't they supposed to go down because of the coronavirus 
you see what happened on Friday they both went up by more than 4.5 percent I already looked at pen and now I know that it is undervalued as well I didn't carry out a fundamental analysis but from this list because it is the list of stocks that went up most and are undervalued on Friday now I know PENN is undervalued and XHR is also undervalued let's look at XHR XHR In the daily chart, we have a bullish headwind, possible reversal signal, and also we have a reversal candle at pendulum or price extreme low. It has displayed extreme bullish pressure and bullish pressure U-turn. These are the kind of situations that give extreme low buy setups. However, None of the Q trade setups are applicable right now because the weekly checklist conditions are not met. If it continues to go up, you may keep an eye and look for a buying opportunity using real time fine tune chart. And if the day closes higher, then you may convert it into a overnight trend, swing trend. Right now, because the weekly is still in bearish color backdrop color is magenta and the shape is also not bullish it is not matching all the conditions for the bullish headwind trade setup so the signal has come if it goes up you may look for a buy setup those are different techniques I use to look for trade setups one is to look for trades from anomalies in Q trade finder summary or you could just go to the long and short tabs and look for different trade setups from there like breakout trades retracement go with flow that is trend following bounce exhaustion trades headwind reversal trades box sideways trades etc or you could come to inside categories and look for stocks going up with high pressure best performing growth stocks value stocks etc and of course you could start with the top-down analysis that is look for the best performing sectors let's say utilities drill down Look for the strongest utilities industry. All of them are looking good. Drill down into the underlying stocks. Then look for stocks that went up on Friday. These are the few stocks. And look for buy setups there. You could carry out the top down analysis. Starting from sector, you could carry out the bottom up analysis using Q scans either in Q global meta stock or using the radar on Q elite on trade station. Or you could do a third way of finding stocks using the inside category. And sometimes you may end up with the same stock, whichever approach you follow. Finally, I always like to look at the technicals, fundamentals, as well as industry strength before buying a stock. I think this approach, this 360 degrees approach and the robust systems, fully real-time systems that I use together, they give me truly high probability trades. And that is why in spite of this market turmoil, I could double the real money account in two months and one week time of course i took too many trades i would not probably take so many trades in my regular trading account it was for an exercise to see how fast i could double 
a 30k USD account but it still shows that whatever be the market condition if you follow a robust system you follow a sound technique you can always make money whatever be the market condition let me summarize though market is very volatile I am continuing with my bullish view the same that I had one week ago also because the memory trend line supports and the watermark pivot supports they are holding they were holding one week ago and they held this week as well at the industry level I found something interesting the industries that were better related to travel laser etc some of those industries in fact went up on Friday you may look for buy setups there if you find some those will be very attractive low price point low risk buying opportunities that is all that I plan to share in today's session thank you for watching I look forward to seeing you in my next session have a great week and trade profitably